Hey folks, uh, I'm just going to knock up another video here because I'm noticing a lot of people online are having some issues with the new uh, GUI layout, the GUI layout for the um, VPC software. There's been some changes to the VPC software which are um, kind of make it a bit better looking, but there's one major change that I'm going to talk about first before I uh, commence with the rest of this video. Okay, so... Uh, the last version of the firmware I used was from middle of January, and that firmware pretty much works okay. Um, there's been a few releases since then, and a few of them have some, some issues. I was testing a couple of them out and had some weird button issues with my throttle. Uh, the T2 and T3 switches were flicking randomly, even though the physical button wasn't moving, you know, the actual button wasn't being touched at all. Uh, which they've cured in the latest release. Um, but... There's something I need to bring to your attention before you go down this road, and it is this. Up until recently, uh, I have two devices. I have a Warbird and an MT50 grip. That's the Mark One grip, and I have a VPC throttle. Now, for whatever reason, and only, only the people of Verbal know, they have decided to rename this. Now, when you look in Windows Device Manager, like I will show you now, You see, uh, here are the names, sizes, as you can. here are the ID names that are used. So right now it says VPC Warbird plus MT50 and VPC dash throttle. Those are the IDs that Windows sees. Those are also the IDs that the games see. And for unknown reasons, Verpal and the newer versions of the firmware have decided to change that name. Now, I, I, they obviously decided for whatever reason to do this, but I don't know if they fully thought this through, and I've tried to reason with them on this one. The reason why I'm bringing this up now, before, before we go down this whole road of fiddling around with new firmware, is this. For example, DCS has um, a lot of individual planes, and each plane has its own config, you know, its own button config, its own access config, and within that listing is the id the name of the device that's being used right now if i were to bring up dcs and look it would it would show you me me having my you know x and y axes being bound on this um and my throttle and other buttons and all being bound on this and that's all good in the hood so that is in and around about i think i counted out something like 43 configuration files for all the individual aircraft and DCS. So they all have their own individual button bindings and axis uh, configurations. And that's great. Except if the company that makes a joystick decides to change the ID. Because guess what? In the new version of the firmware, this old name is replaced by this one. Because it's a right-handed stick, so it's a right VPC warbird and it's got a stick. The VPC throttle has been renamed the VPC MT-50 throttle. So what that means is that if you go and update your firmware, you're going to have to go and uh, mess around a lot with whatever games you happen to use your joystick for. Mainly I fly DCS. I do have X-Plane 11. I fly it very occasionally. Um, I don't really fly any of the space sims. I tried Elite Dangerous for a while, but I just really didn't get into it. The point I'm trying to make to you is this. Because these IDs have been changed, Windows is going to see a different joystick and your games are going to see a diff different joystick. So right now, if I were to update my firmware to the new versions, I'd have to go in and change, uh, I think it was 43 configurations times 2 because I have two uh, verbal sticks. So that's 86 configurations need to be edited and changed inside DCS to keep my bindings the same, all because... Purple decided to change these IDs, this one to this one, from this one to this one. So that's my little warning rant, just to, to let you know that if you're going to go down this road, you could be some, in for some pain later on, because it's it's going to be a different, Windows will see it as a different stick, and your games will see it as a different stick. Now this is independent of the normal reset calibration flag, which is in the configuration software. That has nothing to do with this. This is to do with the names USB device names that Purple give these things now. 
being changed. And I will also bring up the fact that um, it will also affect if you use Joystick Gremlin because Joystick Gremlin will see a different ID. The only saving grace about Joystick Gremlin is it actually has a device swap function. So it shouldn't be too difficult to, in Joystick Gremlin, change your old config that's for that old ID stick to your new stick. So at least that's not that bad. For DCS, um, you can't, what you can do is you can manually go into each, for each aircraft, and import a config file. And you just import the old one, the old named config, and it will pull the bindings for your, you know, your axes, your XYZ, whatever, and buttons in. And uh, you just got to do that 86 times. So, yay. Um, myself, I've actually, I'm actually working on a batch file that will just automatically rename a shitload of different files to the new name. So that'll, that'll save me a bit of time and effort. So yeah, this is just a preamble before I uh, get the ball rolling to let you know that you could have some problems down the road. Right, well, I'll just close, I'll just pause here and then we'll go for the first step, which is sorting out our old configuration stuff first. Now, before I begin and actually start um, using a new version, which is this one here, which came out on the 20th of uh, March, 2019, I'm going to run the current version I have now and do some backups. So to give you a kind of overview of how this works, the firmware that you program onto your joystick or throttle, um, the profile that you create on that particular version matches together. So what I'm trying to say is that if I go and throw the new version of firmware on and have to revert, uh, then it'll cock up my profile. So what I'm going to do first is load up the old version which is from January. I've selected my Warbird. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the file. And uh, did you all this? Bird. Working. I'm going to go and select my throttle. So what's basically happening is every time I click on each of these devices, it talks to the device, pulls the configuration data from it, and then loads it into this program. Uh, and then what I can do is export the file to basically back it up in case something goes tits up. Um, oh. And this is, a, this is a different configuration, so we'll call it throttle no... Mode. Save that off. All right, so that's a good starting point. What that means is if I go and stick the new firmware on and it happens to be shit, like the last one was, then what I can do is load up this version, put the, the, the old firmware back on and lo load the old um, configuration back onto the device and we're good to go. So that's sort of like step one if, in case something goes tits up later on down the line. Hey folks, uh, gonna do another quick tutorial video here on using the Verbal VPC software. There has been a new edition released this week. It's dated the 11th of April, uh, 2019. So let's have a look. So I've already downloaded it here to my hard drive. You can see it's obviously time uh, date stamp and actually is named slightly differently because it says setup. Just zip file. And yep, lo and behold, there is a setup executable. So this should make things a wee bit easier for some people who are less um, technically challenged, shall we say. Double click on this. Brings up the installer. Um, do you want to run this? Yes, I do. I clicked on it. Of course, I want to fucking run it. Um, don't have too many options in the installation. Uh, Russian or English, uh, which I'm assuming is the default uh, setup and or launch language of the program. Okay. I am going to, yes, create a desktop shortcut because it's always helpful. 
there unfortunately has no other options past those two you can't choose where you want to install it so let's just roll and that's the installation handled Okay, so we've got the software installed and it's created a desktop shortcut. Run it up. So it's given us a warning about having two devices uh, connected at once. And the reason why it's telling us to do uh, only one at a time is because God forbid something goes wrong with the firmware, you don't want to break two devices. We'll just hit OK. And I'm going to pull the cable on my actual stick now immediately because i was selecting the throttle it says okay you need to update your firmware so let's go through the firmware update procedure here it's relatively painless now just hit okay to clear that so go to the firmware tab and it says now you've been scaled down to just one do all button which is great it's going to help the more uh, technically challenged people out there that seem to have a problem clicking three different buttons at different times so we'll just click auto update firmware. Get this little warning message. So the basic procedure is whenever you update the firmware, you need to create a configuration profile in this software. And then you then send and save that down to the device. So as the firmware and the device knows what it is. Okay, so that's part one done. So little instruction here to tell you what to do. So we'll go to profile and we select what we've got so for me this is the throttle i have plugged in right now it's a mark one throttle so select throttle and for the throttle there are two available profiles here five modes is the default profile um, and what it basically means is the rotary selector knob the mode selector will allow the B1 to B8 buttons to do different functions depending on what mode they are. And it's basically a mapping um, for the B1 to B8 buttons and different shift state modes. You'll have a bank of uh, 1 to shift state 1, all the buttons, B1 to B8. Then you'll have shift state 2, 3, 4, 5, and they'll actually send different button commands to Windows. And I currently don't use that mode because I don't like it. I actually like to be able to switch every single button on my throttle to do different stuff like uh because i fly dcs so i'm going to use this profile here now I, there are two actual models of the um the vpc throttle there's the mark one that's the one that has the four-way switches at switches um and the mark two which is a newer one that's from around about february 2019 uh, they have the four-way but uh, as well as push on the hat switches these profiles will work for either of them so it's not a big problem so i'm just going to select my one here create profile and now that i've created it i click save because currently it's saying there's no profile against this device And there you have it. Right, now the only thing left to do, whenever you do any sort of firmware update, um, there's kind of three basic steps. One, update the firmware. Two, create the, the uh, profile and save it back to the device. And the third step you have to do is to recalibrate the axes. So for my throttle here, I've unlocked the two sides of the throttle so they can move independently. I'm gonna click calibrate axes. And you now see this little instruction guide to the right hand side here which details the individual steps to actually do this you can read that at your leisure but this this is basically it you move each analog axis from the max to the minimum a couple of times so i just did the left throttle now i'm doing the right throttle now i'm doing the wee scrolly wheel that's on your index finger on the right throttle and then to the right of that, there's the little analog lever. 
And last but not least are the two analog scroll wheels that are in the lower left corner. That's A1 and A2. So you just turn them the whole way around to the right, whole way around to the left, put them back in the middle. Do it a couple of times. And then click Save Calibration. And now the last step to do is to actually save this calibration data back to the, the physical device itself, because that's where it needs to go. Okay, so that's our throttle done. Okay, so we've got the throttle done. Uh, now, next, I'm going to unplug the throttle. Un pull out the USB connector. And I'm now going to plug in my Warbird base that has a Mark 1 grip on it. So as before, it's let me know it's time to update the firmware. And it's, it's a very similar procedure. Just click firmware. And I just have one button to do it all. Neat. And as before, we've got to sort of profile out. By default, it remembers the last one you've used, so I need to change this now. I have a Warbird base. And I have the uh, empty Mongoose the uh, P50 grip, that's the V1. I haven't got my hands on a V2 yet, eagerly awaiting its delivery. And click Create Profile. And save. And as before, we need to calibrate the axis. Any sort of major changes, like when updating the profile and or doing the firmware, necessitates calibration of axes. So as before, I'm going to move my stick to the right, move it to the left, push it forward, pull it back, got to go to the center, do the wee grip or the brake. And then I'm just going to move the diagonal. So that's top left, top right, lower right, lower, le lower left, Top left again, and let it go to the center. Just let it settle for a second. Save calibration. And then save it back to the device. And there we go. Okay, so I've got the throttle and the stick sorted out. I'm just going to plug the throttle back in. And you're probably noticing if you've used any previous versions, like where the fuck are the other buttons? So they've basically divided the software into two kind of operational modes. There's the light mode, which you're seeing now, which gives you firmware update capabilities and calibrate axes and pretty much nothing else. And the pro mode. So I'm going to switch her to pro mode, and to do that, you hold down left control and F1. That'll toggle it on, toggle it off. Now, something to consider here, they have changed a couple of things about the user interface. First, this used to have a couple of different states. It has not connected ready, and another state of orange of not in sync. That apparently was confusing the shit out of people. No idea why, but no accounting for taste. So this presents us with some weirdness and you need to take take note of this. Okay, so currently I'm selecting the Warbird stick. Um, and if I select the throttle, what used to happen, this is the second change that they made. Whenever you toggle between these, it would kind of auto press this button. Now I'll show you what, what issues this, well I wouldn't say issues, but how to deal with this now. I'm gonna go to the button tab. I have selected my 
stick and we'll go back to buttons sorry there we go and you can see this actually lines up there's me buttons there we're tapping out at button 19 if i click load nothing happens because it is actually in sync the data that is on the device and the data that's in the program are actually in sync so yeah loading won't do anything now if i click on the throttle and then go to button it's showing the same data is what should have happened in the older version was as soon as i clicked on this it would automatically press this button and load the information in so just be aware of that if you're fiddling around in here and you've got multiple devices anytime you change between these click the load device now the buttons are all set correctly that's just a little caveat explaining the difference between how the uh, how these things operate between the, the newer versions. Uh, LED control is the same as it ever was. So is the button. I mean, they haven't really changed too much. They've maybe rearranged a few things here um, to make it a wee bit cleaner. So there you go. Um, that's the new version of the VPC software. So just be aware, like I say, if you're changing between these, click the load. Because it's not doing it automatically anymore. Or some reason that customers find it using for some reason so uh if any questions um put them in the comments and i'll try to help you out if i can i hope this helps you